All right, everyone. So we are live and this is being recorded again. I just want to make sure everyone knows uh, if you do turn your camera on, uh, this is being recorded and we do put these on YouTube uh, within a few days. So <clears throat> just want to make you aware of that. So no need to turn your cameras on. We can do that at the end after I'm done recording. Uh, but today's lesson is we're going to be teaching on connecting to the Internet. So some of this you may know and some of this may be new to you but I think we're gonna have a good time. I've got a couple things uh, prepared to show you all about different ways to connect to the internet. And then what is the results of connecting in those different ways? Cause you get different speeds and so forth. And so if there's any questions as we go along, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, also, if uh, you would like to use closed captions at the bottom of your screen, uh, there is an option to click on more and then you can click on captions. Uh, there, there's an option for my speaking language. You want to make that English. And then my caption language, you can make that the language of your preference. And then you'll get closed captions at the bottom of your screen. So feel free to do that. And also make sure you're not hiding captions. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and get going. <clears throat> a couple things uh, just to expand on kind of our deliverables today is we are going to, is someone showing screen? Uh-oh. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, we're going to identify different ways a person can connect to the internet. We're also going to uh, talk about different browsers, so the different uh, ways that you can access the internet from your computer uh, through an internet browser. We're going to talk about the common browser that most people use, and then we're going to talk about the benefits of each one of those. And then we'll also look around um, the internet browsers at the address bar, and we'll demonstrate and go over some exercises on how to use the address bar, which is the section at the top of the internet browser where you put in the address of where you want to go on the, on the internet. And so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our first objective and talking about how to connect to the internet. So of course, getting onto the internet, you can do lots of things. You can buy things, you can watch videos, you can listen to music, you can find directions. There's so many different things you can do on the internet. You can apply for a job, you can uh, network with people that are you know, friends from different areas that maybe you don't see a lot. There's a lot of different things you can do on the internet. You can even do an exercise program um, you know, over the internet if you'd like to. So there's so many things that you can do. A lot of us probably exercised our ability to buy things over the internet over the last 30 days, I would imagine, uh, for the Christmas and the holidays and stuff like that. So that's one of the big advantages of it. Um, and of course, what is the internet really at its most basic form? The internet is how you um, can, can talk from your computer or your phone, whatever digital device you're using, to another computer. And that computer can be pretty much anywhere else in the world. So you don't have to be physically located close to that other computer, but it allows your computer to connect to other computers. For instance, when you go to amazon.com and you're buying, you're just connecting your computer, which would be your phone or your computer, to the amazon.com computer, and it has information. And then you bring that information down and then you can buy things and it's just sharing information between the two computers. So at its most basic form, that is what the internet is. <clears throat> so let's talk about a couple different ways that you can connect to the internet. So at home, most of you probably have, I'm gonna share my screen here, just one second. Okay. So at home, most of you probably have, uh, right here, there's three different ways to connect to the internet. So of course, most of us, are very familiar with how we connect to the internet on our phone. Down at the bottom of your uh, phone, you probably have a internet browser. If you have an iPhone, it's Safari. It's like a white app with a blue um, circle in the middle and kind of a compass looking thing. So that's Safari. I'm sure most of you on your phones know how to get to the internet and access things, but that one is Safari down here. So that is a internet browser that allows you to connect to other computers. Um, the other way we can connect to the internet is through DSL, which is right here in the middle, uh, which is cable. So that is a wired connection. 
And I'm going to show that to you all in just a second. I'm going to actually show you the one here in my house. And then there's a wireless router. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to show you my, let me just share my screen again. One second, please. Okay, so I'm sharing my whole screen now. So I am on the Wi-Fi and you guys can probably see some chats and stuff here, but you should see my whole screen right now. Um, so I am on Wi-Fi and you can see here, if I go ahead and do an internet speed test, so I'm at highspeedinternet.com, you can see my internet speed is about 350, 360, or so download. Download is the speed at which my computer is receiving information. Now it's testing the upload speed. And now it's about 45 to 41 megabytes per second. So again, I'm on the Wi-Fi. So down here in the bottom right hand part of your computer, you can see that there's like a little signal sign and it says E double five internet access. So I'm gonna click that. And then it has some options here. And I'm going to click here, and it shows that I'm connected to E double five. That is the wireless router in my house is called E double five. That is how I get internet in my house, right? So the internet, I'm paying Comcast for internet services, and uh, they send internet to my house. It comes in the form of a coax cable, which I'll show you guys shortly. And then that connects to my wireless router. Uh, and that's just the small black box. It may look like it has some antennas on it or so forth. And then that broadcast within your home or maybe a business, uh, that broadcasts the internet so that you can get to it wirelessly. Uh, Wi-Fi tends to do better uh, when it is upstairs and it broadcasts out and down better than it does out and up. And so if you're thinking about where to locate your internet in your house for best signal, uh, from what Xfinity has told me anyway, uh, you want to be broadcasting out and down. And so normally when you have a Wi-Fi router, you know, the distance to go from where your computer is to where the router is, is usually, oh, I don't know, 50 to 100 feet. Anything outside of that, you're going to start to lose speed. And so again, if I click here at the bottom right hand corner, you can see E double five. I'm gonna just click that. And I'm gonna, again, see that I'm on Wi-Fi here. I want E double five, but I wanna click here and, and see all the different networks that are in my area. So there's a direct HP. Let's see what other, there's a Utopia network. Of course they have that little uh, lock on it, which tells me, that it is locked down and you need a password to actually access it. Because if you have Wi-Fi at home and you don't have a password on your Wi-Fi, anybody driving by your house can connect to your Wi-Fi and use your data. And that's not a, a good idea. Uh, I always like this one right here. There's a guy named Anthony that has one closed. And then there's a Wi-Fi that someone calls Nope. So I think that one's pretty funny because <laughs> they're saying you're not getting into my internet. Um, but I am connected here to E double five. So again, I want to just show you my internet speed while I'm connected to my Wi-Fi. So let's run it again. I'm at highspeedinternet.com. If you guys want to try this on your own, I'll put this in the chat and you guys can try it on your own also. But I'm going to hit restart test and let's see how fast my computer is connecting to the internet right now. Again, it's wirelessly connected. So I'm on the Wi-Fi, 370 or so megabytes per second. And then our upload speed is, oh, we're upwards of 100. It's pretty good. Okay, so we're at 360 download, and then we're at 84.3 megabytes upload, okay? Not bad, pretty good. Um, let me just show you guys. So that is this option over here, the wireless router. I am going to now go ahead and show you guys on my other device. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like on a DSO. Hopefully this works. 
All right, here we go. I'm gonna spotlight that. Okay, everyone should see my desk. Can you guys see my desk over here? Yeah. Okay, so this is my desk over here. There's a bed, sorry, it's a little bit messy in here. But I want to show you guys that this is what the internet looks like when it comes into your house, right? So it's a cable like this. That's called a that is called a coax cable. Okay. That coax cable will come to your router. So this is my router, just from Xfinity. Okay. And as you turn it around, you can see that this is where the internet is coming from the, the box that's on the wall here in my office. And then this is the internet coming in on this cable right here. We call this the coax cable, okay? So it's coming in and it's connecting to the router. And from there, this router then puts out a Wi-Fi signal. As we saw on my computer, uh, my internet is called E double five. So I was able to set this up as my internet in my house, okay? Um, on the back, you see a couple of different options to plug in some additional things. Of course, there's a power cord right there. But I want to show you guys what it looks like when you plug in a uh, LAN cable, as we were looking at a little bit earlier. So remember, my speed was about 340 download and about a hundred upload when I was on Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna show you the fastest available speed and it's called DSL. And DSL is when you take a cord like this, okay? And this is what the wire looks like. It's called RJ45 wire. Okay, technical term, you probably don't need to know it, but I just want you to know there is a wire where you can now go from your router you can plug directly into your computer. This is gonna be the fastest, most reliable internet that you can get. Now, why is this the fastest, most reliable? Because it doesn't have to broadcast it over the air, right? Like you're just getting, um, you know, the actual internet directly from Comcast. It stays in a cable, it doesn't have to go over the uh, air. And so you're gonna get a very, very strong internet signal using the RJ45 cable. Who do you guys think uses RJ45 cables, just real quick. Does anybody know a good reason why you would wanna go from using wireless router to DSL? Anybody? Feel free to unmute if you think you might know. Why would you wanna use cable or DSL internet over wireless router? <laughs> no idea. Okay, uh, so if you have kids, and they like streaming games or they play games online, gamers love cable DSL internet. It's the fastest option. I'm gonna show you about how much faster it is here shortly, but it's the fastest, most reliable, and it's also the most consistent internet signal that you can get in your house because it, it doesn't, you know, Wi-Fi can be strong one second and weak the next second, right? Uh, you ever been on a FaceTime call or a Zoom call and you know your signal is kind of you know degraded. It's a little choppy, and the next thing you know, it's good, and then the next thing you know, it's not. So that's the thing with Wi-Fi. It can be a little bit shaky. The speed can be variable. It's not as consistent. So with cable DSL, it, I have a son downstairs that's playing video games right now, I, and I know that he loves to be on cable because um, things tend to be faster. He can react faster when he's playing his different games and things. And it just makes his gaming experience more pleasurable because um, he's getting a reaction from the internet faster than if he's on Wi-Fi. So let me show you how we connect this. Okay. So you got the RJ45 cable right here. Okay. And right here in the back, you can see there's a couple plugins. I'm just going to plug this directly in here. Okay. Nothing happens when I do that. You don't see a green light. When it connects to the other side, you're gonna see that it's actually gonna light up. So now I'm gonna take this and because my computer does not have a RJ45 on the other end like this, so my computer actually doesn't have 
uh, a port for this. It won't fit. I have an adapter. So my adapter is going to take the RJ45 and it's going to convert it to what we call USB-C. So if you have like a, a newer, any newer devices or anything, you might be familiar with USB-C. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just connect it right here. So that's connected now. And then I'm going to take this other end. You guys can see my computer now. So I'm going to take this end and I'm going to just plug it right into my computer. Right there. So now my computer is now connected to the internet via DSL, not on Wi-Fi. So let me show you what just happened over here. Do you see the green light? So that green light is telling us now that I am connected to the internet via DSL. So I want to show you the difference here now. Share my screen again. All right, so you guys can see my screen again. Uh, let's go back to the internet speed. So remember when I was on Wi-Fi, I did 360 megabyte download. That was my download speed. That's how fast I was receiving internet uh, or, or data from the internet, 360 megabytes per second. Notice something down here. Notice that my Wi-Fi sign, remember I had like that uh, kind of that V looking sign uh, that looked like a signal going out. That indicates Wi-Fi. Notice that it now changed and it shows a plug going into a screen. So that is telling me that my computer is now connected by LAN cable, okay? And we use these words interchangeably. So we, we, we use LAN cable, or you can say DSL. So we kind of use those words interchangeably right there, okay? So let's go ahead. Now that I've confirmed that I am connected via LAN cable, and I'm not connected on Wi-Fi anymore, remember the number 360. I'm going to put it in the chat just so we remember. That was my download. That was my download on Wi-Fi. And then I did 84.3 upload on Wi-Fi. Okay, so we've got our numbers recorded. Let's run the test on DSL. Okay, so what did we get? So it's showing here that uh, we went from 360 megabytes per second when we were on Wi-Fi, and now we went up to 547 megabytes per second. That's an extra almost 200 megabytes per second. Okay, that's really good. And then we went from an upload speed of 84, to 115. Who here has ever been on the internet at home and been like, man, I wish my internet was faster. This is one way that you can get faster internet, but you do have to be close to the router and you need to get yourself a RJ45 cable. Any questions or thoughts on that uh, before we move on? Difference between Wi-Fi and using a router or DSL. Excuse me. Yes. When you use the other cable, does it affect the um the what would I call the data? It, the, can you just put it on any any of the systems? That is, if you are using like Xfinity or um any of these um providers, are you just allowed to put in any cable to increase your speed on its own or you have to get permission from them to increase your speed no no so i'll go ahead and spotlight myself again really quick so you guys can see uh let's just go to spotlight there so no as long as as long as you have uh a cable box and, it, and if you turn it around 
and you see these uh, kind of export holes on the back. Let me stop sharing my screen so you guys can see. One second. Okay, now you guys can see my full screen there. And so as long as you see those, these little ports right here, you got one, I got two, I got a third and a fourth. So this particular router from Comcast had four that I can plug in a, a DSL cable. Now you can get a DSL cable at Office Depot and so forth. They're pretty standard. Um, and again, you know that it's active when you see that green light that starts to flash right there. That's telling me that I'm gonna have an active connection. And so if you have Xfinity, if, if you have a router in your house, look at the back of your router. You should see four ports, maybe two or three, maybe less or, or more, but you should see some ports there in the back and that'll connect to your computer. And then um, just as a piece of advice, most new computers do not have a connection for RJ45. So you may have to get an adapter like I showed you guys that I have an adapter. Um, this going to allow you to connect your laptop directly to the LAN but it's worth it because you're going to get faster, more reliable internet. So one example of when it would also be good to use this, let's say you're not a gamer, but you want to be able to have a more reliable connection. Uh, one example would be to, uh, if I'm hosting like these Zoom calls and the more people that are on these Zoom calls, the more bandwidth I need to host them. Right now there's 14 people on this call so I'm doing okay being on Wi-Fi. Uh, but if there was going to be 40, 50, 100 people on a call, I would 100% connect my computer um, to the uh, LAN cable so that I could get the fastest, most reliable internet. Because as you start to have bigger meetings and host more people, um, you're going to need every single bit of bandwidth that you can get, right? I remember even back in the day, I used to tell my kids to like get off their devices because dad had a Zoom call. But we don't have to worry about that anymore because now we know how to get faster speeds. Has anyone ever used a LAN cable or connected uh, directly, not through Wi-Fi, but through a LAN cable? No? Okay. Any questions about uh, what I just demonstrated to you guys on how to connect with the LAN cable? Everyone's good? All right, sounds good. So just to review really quick, what's the fastest way to connect to the internet? Is it smartphone, wireless router, or cable DSL? Anybody that knows the answer, feel free to go ahead and raise your hand. And you can go ahead and share. The router. DSL. Cable DSL. Cable DSL. Cable DSL. Cable DSL. Yes. And then what, what one's in the middle? A wireless router or a smartphone? What would be the second fastest? A wireless router. Yes. And then a smartphone. Yeah. If you're on your smartphone sometime tonight, just go ahead and Google um, internet speed test. Do a speed test on your phone without your phone being on the Wi-Fi. I think you're going to maybe get, you know, 100 to 200 megabytes download. Um, as you saw earlier, I was on Wi-Fi. I was around 400 when I got on to uh, DSL. I went up to around five or 600. So um, different speeds for different things. You know, if you're just casually browsing the internet, uh, you're not watching videos or you're not trying to, you know, sometimes like churches, right? They stream live to YouTube and things like that. You need an immense amount of uh, internet speed to do those types of things. So that's when it becomes important to be connected directly. Uh, so just keep that in mind for future use if you ever need fast internet. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the different ways to connect using internet browsers. And so I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. Yep. Sure. So internet browsers. So there's various different internet browsers out there. Uh, this one here is what we call Chrome. So Chrome, and it's always gonna be at the bottom of your computer if you're working on a laptop or you're working on a computer, uh, you're gonna see Chrome at the bottom of your screen. So here, 
you can see I have a bunch of different things at the bottom of my screen. This is kind of the, what we call the quick start menu. It stays at the bottom of my screen no matter what I'm doing. I can open up things. I can close things. It doesn't matter. Um, it all stays right there at the bottom. And so you can see I have Chrome right here. This is Chrome. And I have Firefox right here. So I can use either one of these internet browsers to access the internet. So if I click Firefox, it just opens up a brand new window. Uh, let's say we want to go to Amazon, right? So we go to Amazon and we're on amazon.com and we're going on about our business, okay? Um, no big deal. Very easy. Same thing if I go to Chrome. So this is Chrome. You can see that there's sometimes multiple tabs at the top. I prefer Chrome because it is made by uh, Google. Uh, so it, it, it kind of will sync your Google account or your Gmail account if you have a Gmail. Um, so it's really nice because I don't have to log in every time uh, that I go on to here. I'll show you guys what it looks like. Uh, let me close this one out. So when I click on Chrome, it asks me which profile do I want to sign in as, right? Because I've got multiple, I have, you know, personal Gmails and different things. And so instead of having to remember the password for all of these, if I just want to go to my personal Gmail account, I can just click here and it takes me second and it takes me right over here to gmail and then i can go there and i'm logged into my gmail right and i can see that i got the mission app the weekly update <laughs> okay and so that's very easy i prefer um to use google chrome myself uh one thing i do want to show you here is at the top of the screen uh, right here where you see this yellow thing, this is called the address bar. So just like a phone number, websites have addresses, right? So if I want to call you at your phone number, do I have to put your phone number in my phone exactly the way that your number is, right? I can't misdial it. I can't put in a period. I can't put in a, you know, a number incorrectly. Um, I have to be able to Put your phone number in my phone exactly how it is. So like 253-306-4444, for instance. Then I have to hit dial. If I put 4443, it's not going to call you. It's going to call someone else. The same thing applies with the internet. And you have to make sure that you are going to the proper website. So let's say we wanted to go to Amazon.com. I have to go to Amazon. And then... A lot of the browsers these days kind of anticipate what you might want to do. So it will start to finish your typing. Did you notice that as I put in AMA, it's like, oh, you probably want to go to Amazon because that's where most people are going when they start typing AMA. And then I can just hit the right arrow. It completes it. And then I can hit enter. And it takes me to Amazon.com. But what happens if I put in um, Amazon? Com. That domain is not registered, right? So it doesn't take me anywhere. There's no website called Amagon.com. Um, I only missed it by one letter, but again, because it's not exactly right, you can end up at the wrong website. And so it's very important um, that, you know, when you're interacting with the internet, just make sure you're at the right website. One of the things that fraudsters do is they will put up websites that look like legitimate websites, like let's say um, an amazon.com, but it'll be called um, amazon uh, dot, uh, dot trees dot org. But it looks like Amazon. And then they'll put up a little username and password where you can put your information in, um, but they're really stealing your information so they can log into your Amazon account because they put up a fake website to get you to trust it and then enter your information. So it's always important to just verify you're at the correct website, okay? All right. <clears throat> so that's what it looks like uh, to open up different internet browsers. Firefox is okay. Um, you know, if something doesn't work in Chrome, I'll try Firefox. But again, generally speaking, I tend to just use Chrome 
to access the internet myself. <clears throat> Does anybody here use Firefox or anything else? You probably, if you have an iPhone, you probably use Safari. Yes, most times I use Safari. Is that on your uh, Apple device? Yes, Apple phone. My yes. most yeah. of my, um, but my PC, all of them, I use them. Okay, so you so you have an Apple P, uh, Apple device, uh, laptop also. Yes, probably. laptop and the iPad. So mm -hmm. yeah, I use yeah. this the Safari. Then maybe yeah. now we we'll switch on to using Chrome since I have um Gmail. Yeah, I think that you're going to like Chrome. You're going to find that uh, when you go to Chrome and you go to log into your Google account, it's going to say, hey, um, because Google owns Chrome and they own Gmail, they make those two programs work really well together. So um, every time you log into Chrome, it's automatically going to log you into your Gmail account. You don't have to put the password in. It's just extremely convenient. Um, and especially if you have multiple people accessing your computer mm -hmm. and they have different Gmail accounts, that way each person can log into their account uh, when they get on the computer and they don't have to overlap and, you know, um, logging in and out of Gmail, depending on who's on, on the computer. So but I generally it affects the Yahoo because I use more of my Yahoo account. Okay. So it's a big challenge when I'm using the Chrome. So I don't know. Got you. Got mm -hmm. you. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, uh, okay. Let's just do... A couple of little exercises here and kind of see where we're at. I'm just going to share my screen again. Okay. So from here, uh, this is uh, where I need your guys' input. We're going to do just a little quick review here and make sure we all are on the same page. So here at the top, it says connecting to the internet. Um, circle the items that can connect a computer to the internet. So I'll just kind of do this exercise with you all. So can a wireless router connect your computer to the internet? Yes or no? I think yes. I think you're right. So let's go with that. I'm going to put a check mark there. How about a printer? Can a printer connect your computer to the internet? Generally speaking, yes or no? Did we cover this? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. How about cable DSL? Can that connect your computer to the internet? Yes. Yes, it can. Perfect. Um, how about a light bulb? Can a light bulb connect your computer to the internet? I don't think so, no. I don't think so either. <laughs> Good one. How about a smartphone? Can a smartphone that's not connected to Wi-Fi connect to the internet? No. It, it depends. Yes. Sometimes it can pick networks. I don't know. So. It, yeah, if you have a if you have a cell phone with T-Mobile, that's, yes, what, that's what you're paying for, right? Yeah. You're paying mm -hmm. so that your phone can connect to the phone lines and the internet. Right. So yeah, yes. if you, if you, if you have a smartphone, use an Xfinity. Anywhere you are, it can pick on any Xfinity Wi-Fi. Right, right, right. But but even on your smartphone, it, even if you're not close to an Infinity or an Xfinity router, uh, mm -hmm. if you're in your car and you're driving on I-90, um, mm -hmm. normally you have internet because you're connected to the closest Anything. cell phone tower. Right. Yes. I think so cell phone towers allow you to get internet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a check mark next to the smartphone because your smartphone does not need to be on the Wi-Fi um, and able to be able to get data. And then lastly, can a power plug uh, get internet to your computer? That's pretty obvious. No, no. No. Okay. All right. Then let's do the bottom one together here. So it says uh, find an article. Uh, find and circle the internet browsers. Um, is this one an internet browser? And what do we call it? Yes, Chrome. This is Chrome. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and spell this. Let's see how good I can. Chrome. Oh, boy. That was bad. The arrow is gone. So sorry. Chrome. <laughs> uh, how about this one? Does anybody recognize this one? 
I'm trying to remember. The, the blue E. It's affiliated with Microsoft. It's kind of old. Not a lot of people use it these days. Like yeah. Office, Microsoft Office, or this is Internet Explorer. That's so cool. Yes. Okay. So this one is actually, uh, it will connect you. Uh, most people don't have it on their computers these days. Um, it's just not the best browser out there. Um, it can be a little finicky. It won't work on some websites. Um, so not the best, but it will work. Um, anybody know what this is the symbol for right here? Email. This is Gmail, right? If you go to Gmail, did that take you to the internet or is that no. just Gmail? Oh, I think for the mail takes it to yeah. that. Yeah, it's just Gmail. Okay. Gmail. Um, how about let's see. Okay, how about this one right here? This is Spotify. That's not going to take you to the internet. Spotify is like a music app where you can listen to music. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. what, what's this one here in the middle called? Firefox. Firefox. I'm going to try and do this. Fire Fox. Okay. That's Firefox. Yes, that one will take you to the internet. Um, just to go a little bit quicker here, pick up, uh, what's this one down here? If you have an Apple device, you probably know the name of this one. Safari. Safari. Yes. So that one will take you. So again, if you look at my computer down here at the bottom, which ones do you see that I have here on my bottom menu? Which ones of the internet browsers do I have? I have two of them. If you look at the bottom, which ones do I have? Anybody? I can't really see the bottom. I can't see the bottom of here. I'll show it to you. How about now? No. Okay, let me see. Can anybody see which two browsers do I have? I know you have Chrome. Uh-huh. But the other one I can't see. Firefox. I think I have Firefox right here. Firefox. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then lastly, uh, let's do a little review on writing internet uh, web addresses. So if we go here and what's the popular website you guys go to? Let's go to um, Bank of America. So if I go bank space of space america.com, we'll see where it takes me. It, it kind of knew that I wanted to go to Bank of America, but uh, it didn't know for sure. So it's suggesting that, oh, did you mean bankofamerica.com? So I said, yes. So I'm going to go there. And then, of course, up here, I can see I'm at bankofamerica.com. So there are a couple of different um, top level domains. Uh, you guys may be familiar with some of these. So some of the top domains are .com, which means commercial. Right. So I'm at a dot com right now. Dot com means commercial. So normally if you go to something dot com, that means that you are going to a commercial business um, and they sell something or they have information about something. Right. So like Wikipedia dot com. OK, Wikipedia is an online encyclopedia, um, but it's a it's a, actually an org. OK, so org. So that's actually good to show you that org, so anything.org is normally going to be an organization, uh, could be potentially a not-for-profit business. So .com is going to be for a commercial business whose primary you know, objective is to make money. Uh, a .org is going to be an organization. It could be um, you know, something like a Wikipedia. It could also be a nonprofit organization. Uh, let's see. And then we have .edu, harvarduniversity.edu. .edu is going to indicate education, right? So uh, if I want to go to uh, and look up classes at University of Washington, Tacoma, I go here, and what do we have? 
tacoma.uw.edu. Um, so this is Tacoma University of Washington. Exactly. And so anytime you see that top level domain of .edu, that's going to indicate that you're at an education facility. And then the last one um, is going to be, uh, let me see, we did org, com, uh, we did, uh, what is it? One second. Let me look at my notes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember now. So the last one is uh, go. So dot gov. Has anyone here ever been to a dot gov? Probably. Government. Exactly. So let's say um, you needed to pay your taxes. IRS.gov. Right. And there you go. IRS.gov. This is the official website of the inter in in internal revenue system. If you wanted to report a crime to the FBI, you can go to FBI.gov. OK, this is the official website of the Federal Bureau of Investigations. If you go to FBI.com, let's see what happens. Page not found. That's probably because the FBI took that page down because they don't want anyone to be confused and try to go to FBI.com when they should be going to .org. Um, so anytime you're looking at a .gov, it could be a local, a state, or a federal agency. So let's do, um, let's, what's another one? Uh, what's the folks called? Uh, Transportation Security Administration. TSA.gov, okay? So that is a government organization. Um, another one you may see is uh, Canada is all is normally .ca. So if I go to Amazon.com, this is the U.S. site for uh, Amazon. But then there's also Amazon.ca, not com, but .ca. And it wants me to do a little verification here. Just make sure I'm not a robot. And notice now I'm in uh, Canada. So I'm in Amazon.ca. Notice up here also, Amazon.ca. And then it also gives me the Canadian flag. I can change the language to France. So different websites for different regions. We also have Amazon.co.uk. So if I wanted to buy something for whatever reason off of Amazon.uk, and send it to a friend that's in the UK, I don't have to send it from amazon.com. I can go to amazon.co.uk. See, you see the British flag here, shop here and just deliver it. And it's gonna come from, you know, somewhere in the UK and get delivered to that person instead of having to ship it from the US all the way over to the UK when it's the same item essentially, okay? Okay. So who can tell me what are the four different top level domains that we just discussed? Doc. Which one was it? Doc. Dot com? Yes. And what is dot com for? For commercial. Uh-huh. And then dot... What's the next one? ORG. GO oh. for government. GOV for government. Okay. GOV for government, yeah. ORG. ORG. What is that one for? Organization. Uh -huh. Is this UW? UW. Well, and then what was the last one? For school. EDU. 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 Exactly. Oh. Yeah. You guys got it. Y'all got it. Um, so those are the things you want to look for anytime you're accessing the internet. You just want to make sure that you're at an official website. If you start to see stuff outside of that, you know, maybe a .us, that, that's okay. Like, for instance, Mission Africa, the organization sponsoring our training today, is missionafrica.us. That, that's completely fine. That's normal. 
But if you start to see things that are like jobbled letters and so forth, um, you probably just want to be careful about how much information you share with those websites. Because there's a lot of websites out there that are designed to, um, you know, impersonate a legitimate website. And then they try to take your information. But the key is that you look at the URL or that web address up top just to make sure it is a valid um, and legitimate web address. So normally uh, it's very difficult uh, for a bad actor to obtain like a .gov or a .edu. Um, they have to go through certain verifications to get those types of websites just to ensure that they remain safe and trusted. Um, uh, but, you know, .com, mm, you can pretty easily get a .com. Um, so those also just beware and just keep your eyes open for what you're looking at. It's 654. Um, I want to leave a few minutes to answer any questions about anything we covered today. Or does anybody have any questions about upcoming classes? Uh, I'm going to leave an open floor for the next few minutes. Any questions? It was quite straightforward, so thank you very much. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this was a pretty safe so class. <laughs> Reintroducing you guys to some concepts. Uh, the I would encourage you guys tonight, if you have a minute, just on your phone, Google um, Internet Speed Test and test out the speed of your internet. Um, and then maybe get off the Wi-Fi, test it, get on the Wi-Fi, test it. Uh, I think you're going to see that there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, next week, just so you guys know, I'm actually going to stop the recording here for a second and then I'll finish up.